in this lesson, we want to talk about the sum and difference identities for cosine. All right, so as we continue to work through our chapter on the trigonometric identities, we're going to come across the sum and difference identities for cosine. So this guy right here might not be completely intuitive. A lot of students, if they see something like the cosine of, let's say, this A plus B here, well, they might try to distribute the cosine and say this is the cosine of A plus the cosine of B. But that doesn't work. Okay, So you have to use this identity here and say that the cosine of A plus B would be the cosine of A times the cosine of B minus the sine of A times the sine of B. Okay. Now you'll notice here that this is plus and this is minus. So remember the signs here are going to be different. Then for this guy, it's gonna match except for the signs, right? Because now we have the cosine of A minus B. This will be the cosine of A times the cosine of B plus now the sine of A times the sine of B. So again, this is minus and this is plus. So let's start off with a simple example. And here we're given the cosine of 75 degrees. So this type of example, you're meant to give an exact value, okay? So the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna break 75 degrees up into two angles that's going to be on the unit circle, okay? Where you're gonna know what this cosine value is going to be. So I can break this up. One way to do it would be 45 degrees and 30 degrees. So I'll just say this is equal to the cosine of, and I'm just gonna go 45 degrees plus 30 degrees, okay? And then I'm just going to use my little formula. So we'll have what? You want the cosine of this guy, so the cosine of 45 degrees times the cosine of this guy, the 30 degrees. Remember, your sine is going to alternate. So because in this particular case, we have a plus, we want a minus there. Okay, so you want to change your sine. And then now I want to go with the sine of these two angles. So the sine of 45 degrees, and then times the sine of 30 degrees, okay? So you're multiplying here, you're multiplying here, you're subtracting between the two, okay? So now what I wanna do is just come through here and replace these with the actual values. So if you go to your unit circle and you go to 45 degrees or pi over four in terms of radians, you see that it's square root of two over two for the cosine and then it's square root of two over two for the sine. Remember, this is the x, that's the cosine, this is the y, that's your sine. So square root of two over two in each case. So this is square root of two over two, and this is square root of two over two, okay? So what's gonna be for 30 degrees, let's go back. For 30 degrees or pi over six in terms of radians, you've got square root of three over two for your x or your cosine, and then one half for your y or your sine. So this is going to be the square root of three over two, and this is going to be one half, okay? So now all we have to do is just some basic arithmetic. So let's come down here a little bit. Okay, and then let's switch the color here. So this would be the square root of two times the square root of three. That would just be the square root of six over two times two, which is four, then minus the square root of two times one is just the square root of two, and then over two times two, which is four. Now, the only thing you can really do here is write this with a common denominator. So I'm just going to say that this is the square root of six minus the square root of two. You can't combine there because the radicands are different, okay? You have the same index but different radicands, so you can't really combine those. So then this is over the common denominator of four, and this would be your exact value for the cosine of 75 degrees. All right, let's take a look at another example. So we're just trying to find the exact value again. So we have the cosine of pi over 12, so obviously this is given in terms of radians now. So what I'm gonna do, and this is just a personal preference, I'm gonna first convert this to degrees. It's a little bit easier for me to find two angles to add or subtract, depending on what you wanna do. So I'm gonna multiply pi over 12 in terms of radians times 180 degrees over pi. And then basically I'm gonna cancel this with this. 180 degrees divided by 12 would be 15 degrees, okay? So basically if I had 15 degrees, what I'd wanna do is add and subtract, let's say I did 45 degrees minus 30 degrees, that would give me 15 degrees, okay? So I could say this is the cosine of, if this is in terms of radians, 45 degrees is gonna be pi over four, okay, so pi over four, and then minus 30 degrees is gonna be pi over six, okay, in terms of radians. So I'm just gonna use my formula from here and just say that I have the cosine of pi over four times the cosine of pi over six, because this is minus, I now want a plus. So I'm gonna do the sine of pi over four and then times the sine of pi over six, okay? So let me put my equal sign there so we can keep going. And then I'll put equals over here. 
So if I think about pi over 4, or again, 45 degrees, I know the cosine of 45 degrees and the sine of 45 degrees, that's going to be the square root of 2 over 2 in each case. If I go back to my unit circle, you can see for 45 degrees or pi over 4 in terms of radians, we got square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. So let's go back and just replace this with the square root of 2 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. Now for pi over 6 or 30 degrees, we have again square root of 3 over 2 for the cosine and 1 half for the sine. So this is going to be the square root of 3 over 2 and then we're going to have 1 half and then I'm going to put a plus here between them. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit and do some arithmetic. So this would again be the square root of 6 over 4. Now plus, now I'm going to have the square root of 2 times 1, which is just the square root of 2, over 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, so again, pretty much all we're going to do here is just write this with a common denominator. I can't add the square root of 6 and the square root of 2. I can't combine those radicals there because this and this is different, right? So you have different radicands, same index with different radicands. So I'm just going to write this as the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over the common denominator of 4. So this will be my cosine of pi over 12 radians. Okay, let's take a look at one more of these. So you might see the problem that we just worked on, those two problems rearranged. So now you see the cosine of 83 degrees times the cosine of 38 degrees plus, this is the key here, the sine of 83 degrees times the sine of 38 degrees. So you see that you have the cosine of some angle times the cosine of some other angle, okay? And then you have the sine of that first angle, so the angles here match, and then the sine of that other angle. Okay, so the angles there match, you have a plus between them. You're meant to realize that you could write this as the cosine of, again, this is a plus, so I want a minus. So I'm going to do the 83 degrees minus the 38 degrees, okay? So what is this going to be? If I do 83 degrees minus 38 degrees, I'm going to get 45 degrees. So this is the cosine of 45 degrees. And we already know, because we've done this in the last two examples, that the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. So this is exactly equal to the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, now let's look at two examples where we're going to verify some identities. These are a little bit easier than what we looked at in the last section where we were strictly verifying identities. So let's start with we have cosine of, we have theta plus pi, okay, is equal to the negative of the cosine of theta, okay? I'm going to flip this because the easier side is here on the right. So I'm going to write the negative of the cosine of theta is equal to the cosine of, you have your theta, okay, plus your pi. Now, what I'm going to do is just put my equals over here. I'm just going to slide this over for formatting, okay? Normally, they put it in line, but I just want a lot of raw. So I'm going to expand this out using the sum identity for cosine. So this would be the cosine of theta, okay, times your cosine of pi. And then, remember, this is plus, so you want a minus. So I'm going to go the sine of theta times the sine of pi, okay? Now, realize when you work with the cosine of pi or the sine of pi, let's go back to the unit circle. When we look at pi over here, the cosine is negative 1, okay, and the sine is 0. So let's minimize this. So the cosine of pi is negative 1. So let's put times negative 1 like this. And the sine of pi is 0, okay? So we know if you multiply anything by 0, it's going to be 0, right? So basically, you can get rid of this part right here, right? You'd have minus 0, which is just gone. So basically, I can say this is equal to the negative of the cosine of theta. And so that matches exactly what we have here, right? Negative cosine of theta, negative cosine of theta. So we're done. Okay, let's look at another example of verifying an identity. This one's just as easy. You have the cosine squared x minus the sine squared x equals cosine of 2x. Now, if it's not immediately obvious what you need to do, Remember, if you have 2x, this is the same as x plus x, okay? So if you're in this section, you're looking to think about the sum and difference identities for cosine. So think about things you can add or subtract. So 2x is x plus x. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, let's just go ahead and put equals here. I'm going to write cosine of x plus x like this, okay? And then I'm going to use my sum identity for cosine. So I'm going to say this is the cosine of x times the cosine of x again, then minus, remember this is plus, this is minus, the sine of x times the sine of x again, okay? So once you write it like this, it's clear that this is going to match, right? Because cosine of x times cosine of x, I can say this is the cosine squared of x. And then minus, I can say sine of x times sine of x is sine squared of x. And now I can see that this side matches this side, right? Cosine squared x minus sine squared x, cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So I can put my check mark there and I'm done. 
Okay, let's look at one more problem type that you're going to see. So we're asked to find the cosine of s plus t. You might also get the cosine of s minus t. The procedure, the way you do this type of problem is the same, okay? So you have s in quadrant 1 and t in quadrant 3. So they're giving you information about sine. So the sine of s is 3 fifths. The sine of t is negative 12 thirteenths. So the first thing we want to do is find the cosine of s, so that equals what? And the cosine of t, so that equals what? So one way you could do this is you could use your Pythagorean identity. Remember, cosine, in this case, let's say squared of s plus sine squared of s is equal to 1. Okay. So if I plug in for sine of s right here, I can figure out what cosine of s is. Okay. So let's scroll down. We'll come back up. So this is going to be 3 fifths. So remember, this guy is squared. So I'm going to plug in a 3 fifths here, and I'm going to square that. So plus, you have your cosine squared of s, and this equals 1. Okay, so 3 fifths squared is going to be 9 25ths. So this is 9 25ths. So plus you have your cosine squared s here, and this equals 1. Okay, so I'm going to subtract that away from each side. So I'm going to have the cosine squared of s is going to be equal to, I'll go ahead and write 1 as 25 over 25. So I have a common denominator, and I'm going to subtract away 9 over 25, right? I'm just subtracting this away from each side. So 25 minus 9 is going to give me 16. And so I'll say I have cosine squared s is equal to, again, this is 16 over 25. If I want cosine by itself, I'm going to take the square root of this side. Again, you do plus or minus, but because we're in quadrant 1 for s, it tells us that. I just want the principal square root of this guy, so I can erase this and just say I have cosine of s is equal to this. And so cosine of s will be... The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. So you get 4 fifths there. So this guy is going to be 4 fifths. Okay, what about the cosine of t? Well, let's figure that out using the same process. Let's just change up this formula. And I'm going to put t here and t here. It's the same thing. I'm just going to plug in for this. So negative 12 thirteenths. But t is in quadrant 3 now, so keep that in mind. So let's come down here and let's plug in. So we're going to have the cosine squared of t then plus, and I hate using T because it gets confusing with this plus symbol. So let me use the plus symbol in like black or something so it's clear that this is a plus. I'll even circle it. That's a plus, okay? So then we have the sine squared T is equal to 1. I'm plugging in a negative 12 thirteenths there, so negative 12 thirteenths, and this guy's being squared. So if I square a negative, I get a positive. If I square 12, I get 144. If I square 13, I get 169. So I'm going to say this is cosine squared t, and then let me be careful. I'm going to put the plus sign here. Okay, again, that's a plus. And then this is going to be 144 over 169, and then this is equal to 1. Okay, I'm going to subtract this away from each side. And before I do that, let me just get a common denominator going. So let's go cosine squared t, okay? This is going to go over here. So I'm going to put equals, and I'm going to do 169 over 169, so that's 1. I just wrote it with a, with a common denominator with this guy. Then minus, again, I'm subtracting this away from each side, 144 over 169, okay? So if I do 169 minus 144, I get 25. So let's scroll down just a little bit, and we'll say that cosine squared of t is equal to, again, this is going to be 25 over 169. Now, because we're going to be in quadrant 3, in terms of this t guy here, cosine is going to be negative. Okay, so I want the negative square root when I do this side. So I'm going to say cosine of t is equal to the negative of the square root of 25 over 169. So let's go ahead and simplify that. So we'll say the cosine of t is equal to, we'll have the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 169 is 13. So the negative of 5 over 13. Okay, so that's going to be my cosine of t. Okay, so let's put negative 5 over 13 like this. So now that you have all the information, you can find cosine of s plus t. So sometimes they give you sine of one of them and cosine of the other. Sometimes they give you sine of, of one and then sine of the other. Just depending on the situation you're given, you want to just plug into the identities that you know about, come up with sine, cosine of each of the angles, and then you can go through and use your sum or difference identities depending on the problem. Here we're going to use the sum identity for cosine, and I'm just going to say that we have cosine of our s plus t is equal to, again, if I take my cosine of s, I know what that is. That's 4 fifths. 
then times my cosine of t, that's negative 5 over 13. This is a plus here, okay? So I want to make sure this is a minus. You got to be really careful with the signs here because sometimes you'll make a mistake with that. So now I want the sine of s, which is 3 fifths, okay? And then I want times the sine of t, which is going to be negative 12 thirteenths, okay? So let's come down here a minute and just process this arithmetic. So I'm going to say this is equal to, if I multiply here, you see that this 5 would cancel with this 5, so basically I have a negative 1 there, okay? So this is basically negative 4 over 13, so negative 4 over 13, and then minus, you're subtracting away. This is 3 times negative 12, which is negative 36, I'm going to write this as, over 5 times 13, which is going to be 65. Now, I canceled here because we were doing multiplication, but it actually would have been smarter if I wouldn't have canceled, because then I'd have a common denominator. So let's undo this and say here we have 4 times negative 5, which is negative 20, okay, over 5 times 13, which is 65. In this particular case, it's better to not cancel, because now I have a common denominator, and I can basically say what? I have negative 20 minus a negative 36. Again, you've got to be really careful with that sign. Negative 20 minus a negative 36, which is going to be negative 20 plus 36, which is 16. Okay, let me write this in different color. So this is going to be 16, and then over, you're going to have 65. So this is going to be your answer for cosine of s plus t.